So if you want to succeed in life, should you spend most time leveraging your strengths or fixing your weaknesses? If you're going to spend most time anywhere, spend most time on your strengths, leveraging them, and then managing around these. Why? Two reasons. One, just morally, it's going to feel a heck of a lot better for you to know that you are characterizing yourself by who you are, that you're trying to take who you are really seriously and contribute it. If you wanted to have a bad relationship with someone, you'd get into the relationship with them and go, look, I love you, you're perfect, now change. And many of us, when we spend time focused on our weaknesses, we're actually building that sort of relationship with ourselves. We're wishing we were different. You've got this kind of confrontational relationship with yourself. So the first reason to focus on your strengths is it actually builds a much more beautiful and much more generative and much more generous relationship with yourself. That doesn't mean that you, you don't try to leverage your strengths intelligently, that you don't try and figure out the best and most helpful way to contribute them. You do. If you happen to be really strong at um, being assertive, it doesn't mean you just shout at people all the time. It means you figure out ways to use your assertiveness intelligently. But at least when you're doing that, you are building a, an affirming relationship with yourself, which is pretty good. The second reason though, which is interesting, is that you'll actually grow most, be most productive by leveraging your strengths. Doesn't mean you don't fix your weaknesses. At some point you've got some things that might get in the way, you better just deal with them. But you don't grow most there. We know that you grow most in your areas of strength, you get exponential growth in your areas of strength, and you get incremental growth in your areas of weakness. Why is that? One reason is just brain science. We know you grow more synaptic connections in your head where you have the most pre-existing synaptic connections. You grow most in your areas of strength. The other reason, of course, is that a strength isn't what you're good at and a weakness isn't what you're bad at. A strength is what strengthens you and a weakness is what weakens you. We know that because, frankly, there are some things that you're really good at that weaken you. There are some things you've probably got them where you go, I'm great at this, but if I never had to do it again, it'd be a day too soon. That's a weakness. A strength is so much more appetite than it is pure ability. And of course, it's the appetite that drives you to want to do it again and practice it again and refine it again. And therefore, it's the appetite that leads to the practice that leads to performance. So leverage your strengths, manage around these because you get, yes, it feels better, but you get a greater uplift in terms of performance and contribution. Unfortunately, you're going to get a lot of messages out there that tell you to focus on these and, and, and take these for granted. You're going to get it at school, you're going to get it at home, and you're going to get it at work. In fact, in many places at work, they will actually call weaknesses areas of opportunity, as though you will grow most over here. You're going to have to super withstand that and say, no, 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 I'll deal with these, but I will leverage these because I want to give more. It's not just to pat myself on the head, it's because I want to contribute more. Every one of us has unique strengths, every one of us has unique activities we love, and every one of us will contribute more when we take those strengths and love seriously and then leverage them for the benefit of the world intelligently.